Welcome to my preview of the TransPerfect Music City Bowl featuring 7 and 5 Tennessee going up against 8 and 4 Purdue, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursday, December 30th on ESPN. Tennessee favoring this one by 5.5 points and given a 51.6% chance of winning. These teams have met before Purdue won the one and only game in the series uh, in 1979, winning 27 to 22, 20, sorry, 27 to 22. Two in another bowl game, the Blue Bonnet Bowl at the time. As far as record reviews for these teams, well, first year, uh, Josh Huppel has taken Tennessee to exactly the record that I thought they would. I was projecting 7-5 to five for Tennessee. They did that. Athlon Sports was looking at 6-6, six and six, so obviously Tennessee shooting just above uh, the bore, the bore site on that, and Tennessee getting to the 7-5 record. I thought they would. A lot of that because I think that Jeremy Pruitt left this team in a good spot. Yeah, three and seven is not what this program wants, but I think a lot of that was COVID-related. I don't think Pruitt deserved to be fired. So Hopple coming in with Pruitt's guys was able to get to a seven and five record against a, a legitimately tough schedule here for Tennessee and uh, had a good foundation to work with. And we'll have to see what he can start doing uh, next season, the year after that, when he starts bringing in his own players and working away from Pruitt's model in this one. But Purdue, let's talk about them for here is for a second. Not having it all the season I thought that they would, or that really anybody else thought that they would. Athlon Sports was looking at five and seven for them. I was thinking two and ten. I thought this was a team that would be the basement dweller of college football, like they have been over the you know recent and extended history. Two and four last season, four and eight the year before that. And they went out and got eight wins. This is a Purdue team that has definitely started at turn to corner. You always have to wonder with these big seasons after long years of, you know, down bottom of the dumps kind of years. You always have to wonder if they're one off, one hit wonder kind of seasons. You know, look at LSU going and winning, uh, winning the SEC, the national championship. Not that LSU is has been on the same level as Purdue. That's a team that has been a national champion contender. But you always have to look at those one off seasons and wonder if they're one off seasons. Well, with Purdue here, the way that they've won these games against elite and, and great competition, wins against Michigan State, wins against Iowa. I think that Purdue has established themselves as a mid level, at least a mid tier team, which is they have, like I said, they've been bottom of the dumps a basement dweller of college football, I think that they have started to establish themselves as a mid-tier team, and maybe they can start to climb from that mid-tier to being a competitive team in the Big Ten, then maybe we'll be pushing for some bigger things down the road. That's all down the road. That's the future we're talking about here today and how these teams got to these records. For Tennessee, no bad losses. All the teams that they lost to were either at the time or are now top 25 opponents. So all top 25 wins. They have wins against Mississippi State and against Kentucky, a 45-42 to win against Kentucky. So Tennessee took a hard schedule and lost the games you probably would expect them to lose, but also won some games against teams that were better than were being projected. In Kentucky, that is a quality win against a good Kentucky program this year. So Tennessee, uh, definitely you're looking at a 7-5 team, but that's 7-5 out of the SEC top conference in the nation. No, I'm neutral guy here, Boise State out of the Mountain West, uh, but you recognize strength when you see strength. So going 7-5 in the SEC is definitely a hard accomplishment, and they did a great job this season in getting to that. Purdue, uh, they, like I said, incredible season for them. Upset wins against Iowa and Michigan State. Almost got an upset against Ohio State. That close to getting an upset against Ohio State as well. Knocked two teams out of any shot at, at a playoff run. They also, however, lost to Minnesota, almost lost to Illinois, and almost lost to Nebraska. So they played up to and down to competition. And we'll have to see coming against a middle of the pack team here in Tennessee where they where they end up playing is at that are they going to where they're going to find themselves on that scale? Are they playing up to or down to against a team that is really sitting at their level as it was? So as far as top players for these teams, well, for Tennessee, it's been the Virginia Tech transfer, Hendon Hoker, uh, 2,567 yards passing, 26 touchdowns, three interceptions, 561 yards rushing, and five touchdowns. Really a great season for Hoker. Has shown that he has been, that he can run it and pass it just as well in both of those categories. Across, sitting across from him, however, is another great quarterback, top quarterback for Purdue, Aiden O'Connell, who's thrown for 3,178 yards, 23 touchdowns, and eight interceptions. So this is really a battle of the quarterbacks. It's an underrated matchup here with two programs that have traditionally been kind of one of those bottom to mid-level teams, but I think that this is going to be a, a not just a great opportunity for these quarterbacks and these players to show what they bring to the table, but an opportunity for both these programs to show that they are moving in the right directions, maybe moving out of that mid-level tier of college football. They have a lot to build on, of course, first-year head coach here for Huppel, trying to build something here at Tennessee, get Tennessee back to being a team, you know, the glory days, the, the you know, this is a blue blood of college football here in Tennessee that is used to being one of the top teams in the nation. They're, you're used to being what Alabama is now, and they want to get back to that. It's a tough ask in the modern era of college football, 
and especially playing in the SEC. But both these programs with a bowl win here is going to, it's going to do a lot to, to prove this is a one-off season for Purdue, that they are a legitimate team, and for Tennessee that they're moving in the right direction. As far as getting that win here for Tennessee, so Purdue is without their main wide receiver who's decided to skip this bowl game. Uh, so no David Bell for Purdue. 93 receptions, 1,286 yards receiving. So he has been the main target for O'Connell. I mean, he has... Base, he has a third, basically, of what O'Connell has put out this year in the passing game. So for them, it's going to be rattle O'Connell. So Ra O'Connell's going to be without his number one target. When you have a quarterback, they get comfortable with that number one guy. They're always looking for them. When they get stressed, when they get under pressure, they look for that threat. But if that guy's not out there, he's going to have to start trying to think about some other opportunities. Maybe whoever ha has a hot hand, he's going to start pushing the ball into situations he shouldn't. So First off, rattle O'Connell so he starts making those mistakes. And the second thing here is find out who his new number one threat is. Who is he keying on now that uh, David Bell is out of the way? Who is he keying in on? Who is that guy? Find out who that, that target is and shut that target down to further rattle O'Connell and force him to spread the ball out, which like I said, he's not necessarily used to doing with a, such a strong presence on one receiver this year. Uh, for Purdue... Play up to the competition. Don't play down to Tennessee. You might be looking at a team. You're saying, "Oh, they're seven to five. We don't have you. Not that we don't need to under prepare for them, but you know, we beat in Michigan State. We beat in Iowa. We almost beat Ohio State. We're fine. This is a Minnesota type team. This is not a Minnesota type team here for Tennessee. This is a seven and five program out of the SEC. This is a team that if they were sitting in another conference, if you put them in the ACC, they'd probably have 10 wins. <laughs> if you put them in the Big Ten, they'd probably be shooting at 8 or 9 wins at least. This is a program that you want to go out and play hard against because, like I said, all quality losses for this program across the board and some good wins as well. This is a Tennessee team that is underrated. You want to make sure you don't under underestimate them. So you've either played up to or under competition this season. This is a team you want to play up to for sure. As far as my prediction on this game... I think that Purdue finds out that SEC football is a little bit of a different brand here across the board. This is a 7-5 program for Tennessee, but they're not a typical 7-5. They're a 7-5 SEC program. I think Purdue's going to find that a little bit more difficult to come up against. They're missing their main target in the receiving game. I think that O'Connell will struggle a little bit without that safety net that he's had all season. And I think that Tennessee ends up getting the win in this one. I do think it'll be a close game. I'm excited for this matchup, but I'm going to call over on the over-under and Tennessee with a victory. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you like, subscribe. I'm previewing every single football every single bowl game this season in fact tonight i'm going through and i'm knocking them all out so make sure you like subscribe i'll put the link in the description to that playlist uh thanks for watching this video and as always go big blue